The first one is on a break-even sort of problem. Does anybody recognize the term queasy writer? It's a play on something. Easy it's a play on the title Easy Rider, which was about what? 1969 movie. Or, um, two motorcycle hippies who. Henry Fonda. <laughs> Henry Fonda and uh, the. Oh, I can't think of his name. He wore a football helmet in the movie, though. I know he came out in a football helmet. Oh, that was Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson wore the football helmet. Uh -huh. The other guy is Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper, that's right. Yeah. He wore a cowboy hat. Yeah. Anyway, this is a play on that. Queasy Rider Products has an anti-motion sickness package for travelers. And so they're going to tell us that they've got fixed costs of $31,000 a month. And variable costs when they produce their product of $5.50 per packet. And they intend to sell the product, their selling price, for $11. And that's pretty much what we start with. And the question is, how many of these things have they got to sell to pay for all their costs to break even? And there's a real easy formula for it if you like formulas. It is that break even equals your fixed cost divided by your contribution margin. Contribution margin. Let me make sure I'm getting this on the camera the right way. Yeah, not too bad. Your contribution margin is your price minus your variable cost. So in this example, the contribution margin is $11 sales price minus a $5.50 per unit variable cost, which is also, by the way, $5.50. Every time they sell one of these things, they make $5.50. You see that? What do they do with that $5.50 they made? Pay the fixed costs. If you do the division here, $31,000 divided by $5.50, you get, say again, number? 5637? Yes. You round it up? I round it up because you can't. Because you can't sell a partial unit. Came up 56, 36 point something, something, something. Point three six. They got to sell 5,637 units to make their costs. That's what's break even, cover costs. That's pretty easy. What happens for every unit they sell beyond this? How much profit? $5.50. And that's, as their sales grow, that's the rate their profit grows. Again, not rocket science. Now, that was the first question, and then we play games with it. They call it sensitivity analysis, but um, if you could reduce your fixed cost to $25,000, what happens to your break-even? It goes down. It goes down. What does it become? Uh, 45 46 45 46 It's got a nice... I wonder how tough it was to bring $6,000 out of fixed costs. Maybe you had to take a salary cut. But maybe that's, uh, maybe that's doable. So that was, that was the B part. The C part, let me see if I can find another color crayon here. C says, what if instead we could reduce our variable cost to $4.25 a unit. So this becomes $4.25. Variable costs are $4.25. What happens to your contribution margin? It goes up, right? 
$6.75. You're making $6.75 on every unit you sell. So your break even now becomes 31,000 divided by the 675. How many units you got to sell to break even now? 4593. 4593. Okay. Once you sell 4593, what happens? Profit. You make 675 on each additional unit, not the old 550. You with me so far? Mm -hmm. So, look at the difference here. 4593, 4546, and 5637. We know that either one of these would be better than where we started. Which one would you rather do? Green. The green one? Why? It's harder to break even. You've got to sell more <laughs> units. But once you get there, your profit grows that much faster. It grows by 675, not 550. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Pretty logical? That was the whole question. There's some fairly straight, straightforward logic if, 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 if it appeals to you. Questions? Anybody? So, who's had accounting with Mr. Hooper? How good are you? Pretty good. Pretty good? Are you afraid of numbers? No. Do you think most Americans are afraid of math? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I could tell you some stories. Probably half. I'd say half, you're being very generous. I honestly would put it at 80%, 85%. And I find, I, I teach the managerial econ class. And the way I teach it, it's a lot of math, but it's nothing, it's not calculus. It's just a lot of calculations. Finance course, I'm teaching that this summer, same thing. A lot of, a lot of math, but not sophisticated math. You just got to follow the logic. Well, I did this, divided by that, and it got that. Well, what does it mean? Oh. Well, if you understand what it meant, the math isn't so bad, but there's a lot of calculations. And it troubles me sometimes when I see people who say, well, I want to go into management, but I'm not really very good at math. Oh, man, don't do that. I've always got angry at people when they said, oh, I'm not good at math. I'm like, it's not, it's not like English where it's, it changes every five minutes for some reason. <laughs> but uh, math is it's logical, I guess, because I think logically. Um, just do you remember how old you were when you learned the multiplication tables? Well, five. Got five, yeah. My daughter was whatever it was in school, eight, nine. Yeah. And I remember making flashcards and trying to teach her the multiplication tables. And I didn't know which one of us was going to die first. <laughs> it was a miserable experience for both of us because to me it was so simple. And math is simple once you see it. Mm -hmm. But until you see it, sometimes it's just... And, and when you don't see it at first, and you sit in a classroom with 30 people, and the teacher devotes 50% of his or her time to the people who are causing problems anyway, and you don't learn a hell of a lot, and they promote you up to the next grade, math gets that much scarier. And so we have a lot of folks coming through our public school system. Snowball who, effect. Who are what? The snowball effect. That's what my teacher used to call it. If you don't get one part of something, it rolls into you not getting something else, and then that rolls into you not getting something else. And what you call it? The snowball effect. The snowball effect. Absolutely right. And it rolls downhill, <laughs> right on top of you. <laughs> My point would be that in, in management, you can't be afraid of numbers. And if you're quick and easy and willing to engage them, your stock goes up. Your credibility goes up. So oh, not so much in this course because we've got so much else to do. But I know in the managerial econ and the finance course, I beat the hell out of you with numbers just so that you can say, well, I'm not afraid of it anymore. And I think that's a good thing. You can't be afraid to dive into it. All right, question number two. We got a home health services business. They're contemplating building it, and they say the overhead and fixed costs, so here we go again, fixed costs, would be about 18000 a month. And you're going to be calling on patients at home, and the cost per visit on a patient is expected to be about $160. That includes the salary of the nurse who's doing the call, plus 
his or her transportation, communications, computer. And it would generate revenue, each sales call, I'm sorry, each patient call would generate revenue. We would bill the patient $325. Sound like the last problem? Should. That the cost per visit is your variable cost. The revenue is your price. And so your break even, fixed cost over contribution margin, 18000 over the difference here, $165. 110 Thank you. Feeling foolishly courageous, I didn't work into these out before I came to class tonight. So don't lie to me, I won't know any better. <laughs> 110 visits. Anybody here familiar with home health care <coughs> or any experience with it? My sister. I got to tell you something. I think that is going to be a boom in business for as long as you as I, and I can look in the future. Mm -hmm. the baby boomers are retiring. I'm sorry? The baby, boomers are. the baby boomers are retiring and having health problems and needing mm -hmm. help. And you know what it costs to move into an assisted living facility these days? I've got a real good one. My dad's 95. He's living in one right 400, 600 yards from my house. But it's even there, it's still costing me between four and five grand a month. Good grief. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and they go up mm -hmm. from there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They can go way up from there. It depends on the level of care you need. Does he have long term health Does he have long term care? He didn't, he didn't have long-term health insurance. He was retired military, so he's covered through all kinds of insurance, it's which fortunately... Huh? It's still 4000 after all that? Uh, that no, covered? well... He was just saying that's how much it costs. That's how much it is. That's how much it costs. And that, right. that, he pays that. That's not covered by his, his health insurance. Right. That comes out of his pocket. His prescriptions, physical therapy up to a point, those sort of things, covered by his insurance. But that, if he goes in the hospital, completely covered by his insurance. But five thousand, four thousand, five thousand a month, out of your pocket. Anybody here bought or, bought or considered long-term care insurance? My long-term care for my wife and I cost me seven hundred dollars every quarter, and that only covers three thousand dollars a month for several years. But we figure it, we'll pay part of it through that long-term care insurance, part of it through our other <coughs> retirement savings investment programs. And, when I start robbing banks. <laughs> Go for the kneecaps, man. Say again? Go for the kneecaps. Go for the kneecaps. Uh, my point is, I, I constructed this example in particular because I think this illustrates a, 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 a real growth industry. My father had a home health care nurse come in and visit with him for a couple of years before he went to the retirement uh, living facility. And they were phenomenal people. And I was, I was very grateful they were there. What did that cost? About 80 to 100 I, a day? I don't remember what we paid for that visit. Mm -hmm. They came by, most of the time that was going on, they were coming in only once a week. I think we moved up to twice a week just before he went in the living facility. Mm -hmm. That can be anywhere from 50 to 200. Per visit? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now imagine managing that kind of a business. What mm -hmm. would your life be like? What would you be doing? You've got to market the business and find the clients, <coughs> the patients. You've got to hire the amount. skilled people, mm -hmm. and then you've got to make sure they are honest and competent and dependable. Now, there's a nightmare for you right yeah. there. The uh, people, granny nannies, are the ones that are capitalizing granny this nannies. right now. Yeah, because they not only do it for parents, but they're now picking up um, children like new mothers that need a little extra help. Like they've expanded, to, but they started as. Home elderly elderly care. care. Yeah, that would take care of elderly. Yeah. yeah, my mom. I mean, if you find the right people, I mean, my mom used to. She stopped doing it, but when you get the right one, people would tell other ones, and they would pay her quite because they knew they could trust her and how she took care of them, mm -hmm. and they'd pay her quite. She kept saying, "You need to get into this to this hourly." It's not something I'm interested in, but she did it and did it for a while. I would say it's got great potential, yeah. but it's going to be a real job. Yeah, I mean, a lot of risk in it too. You got people, you know, people you've hired, you hope you trust, going into strangers' houses, and you're hoping they're not stealing from you. You better have some insurance. Yeah. Liability. Huge liability. Yeah. Okay. Just an example. Um, they took this question a little bit further. It said, um, 
What happens if you reduce your fixed cost to fifteen thousand? What happens there? Anybody? Number of visits go down to ninety-one. Ninety-one visits. Good. And then again, the other alternative, they reduce the variable cost to what? One hundred thirty. So then your break-even becomes eighteen thousand divided by one ninety-five. Ninety-three. Ninety-three. So you'd like to do one or the other of these. Which one would you prefer? Red. The one in red wine. Better profit. Because once you hit break even, and break even isn't that far apart, mm -hmm. once you hit break even, you're making $195 a visit instead of $165. I don't know. I, I think for that one, because you're dealing with health care, the fixed costs might be the better one to lower. Why? Because uh, if, you're, if you're starting to pay less for the employees going out, into these areas yeah. to visit these homes, then you might be getting Your less trustworthy quality. employees. Excellent so point. So you'll bring about more company loyalty if you can reduce fixed costs and maybe raise the variable a slight bit. Let me ask you this. If you had this kind of business, how would you treat your employees, the ones that are going out making those house calls? I treat them very well. You better because they can ruin you. Mm. And if they are doing good work and they're supporting you, they'll build your reputation faster than any advertising you can ever do. Never let them know they have that power. <laughs> <laughs> but your point's very well made. We're doing this sort of clinically through some numbers. But when you start considering some of the other ramifications of these decisions, it's not as easy as just calculate the numbers. What kind of a manager would you need to run that kind of business? Disc-wise. Well, I'd say I probably am, just because they're more social. But Most of your clients are going to come to you to get, you know, all the information and get set up. So you're going to be the primary salesperson, the manager. So you're going to need some extroverted abilities, eyes. What else? Uh, ICS would be a good combination. ICS? Mm -hmm. Because they, like you said earlier, do have the ability to switch to D mode every now and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I would, and this is off the top, there's always going to be some variation. Off the top, there's going to be one of those jobs where you don't want a D presence on a continuing basis because that will turn your employees against you. Mm. But you want a D who can go in there and clean house when it needs to be done. Also, you'll be meeting with these patients on occasion just to yep. have talks with them. So if you're a pretty outstanding guy, then if they're having a trouble with an employee, they know they can just pick up the phone and call you. Oh and have a good conversation mm -hmm. about it. But that's when you've got to be able to be the D on the other side and straighten things out. No to Zero tolerance, if you will. Okay, same kind of questions, okay? No problem. Last question involves our calculators <coughs> and the time value of money. And we did this once before in, in class, didn't we? Some of the TVM stuff? Mm -hmm. A little bit. A little bit. Well, let's see how we can do here. Lay the problem out first. Sharon is 29 years old. Or so she claims. Or so she claims. <laughs> I love that line. She would like to retire. I think I may have this off the camera. Let me redo this. She's 29. She wants to retire when she's 67. And she thinks her life expectancy is to live till age 80. And so this is, this is what I call the retirement problem. And, and you've got to make those kind of forecasts. Does that sound a little cold to say, oh, well, she's going to die at 80? No, that's Pay attention, folks. Nobody gets out alive, okay? <laughs> wow. And what she would like to do is to generate another $4,000 a month in income for her <coughs> retirement stage. And... She thinks she can earn 6% on her money over her lifespan as an average. And the question is, how much money does she need to save or invest, let's say, starting today per month? And to do this, you'll need the, uh, the financial calculator. All the way through age 67? She's going to save and invest up till 67, 
And then at that point, she's going to draw on that money That's for another 13 years. For 4000 a month. For 4000 a month. Now, what happens when you do this is you've got to work backwards. Mm -hmm. You've got to say, okay, when she gets to be 67, how much has she got to have to get her to age 80? So this is the amount we want to figure out that will carry her forward. And so using the buttons on the calculator, and if I, if I leave you behind here, you've got to let me know. What we've got here is an annuity, a regular payment. And so the payment here is 4000 The interest rate is 6% per year, but she's doing this on a monthly basis. So you want to divide it by 12. Let's get a monthly interest rate, not an annual. And then, how many times is she going to receive $4,000? How many payments is she going to receive? 13 years times 12 months each. Another tricky calculation, 130 and 156. And what do we want to calculate? We want to calculate the present value she will need at that point. So calculate present value. Okay. If you recall, when you put in the payment, if you make it a negative number, your answer will come out a positive number. So here we go. Anybody? Four hundred thirty-two thousand five sixty-one point seventy-six. Yes, sir. $432,561.76, please. That's how much money she needs to accumulate over her working life if she wants to retire with that additional $4,000 a month payment. So stop right there. Is anybody having some issues or difficulty about how we got that number? How do you enter the interest? I do 6 <laughs> divided by 12 equals, and then push IY. Okay. Yeah. So if you get a weird number like 8 divided by 3. Push the equal button before IY. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then whatever is displayed, just push IY. Good. Anybody else? Anything? Don't be taken on this attitude of, I don't understand it, but I'll figure it out when I get home. Okay. Yeah, I, don't have, I don't have a calculator on this. Yeah. Okay. I'm getting 621000 for some reason when I put in those numbers. Did you make that a negative 4000 I did a positive. Okay. Before you do anything, should, did you I clear the it. registers? <laughs> yes. I'll do it again and do negative just to see if it changes it. Okay. Which portion do we engage or make negative? Well, either the payment or the present value, one of them is going to be a negative number. Okay. So if you put the payment in as positive, your answer will show a negative sign. Just disregard it. It's not yeah. critical. Okay. So I multiply my payment times? 13 years, 12 times a year. You're going to have 156 for N. You're going to enter these buttons, right? Mm -hmm. So which one are you asking me about? Um, yeah. Okay. I know she wants 4000 a month, so that's her payment that she wants. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to enter 4000 Down at the bottom is a plus or minus sign. I can change it to a negative. Okay. And then press PMT. Okay, I was pressing that before. All right. All right. Let me show you one thing. Second, clear value. Clear TVM, or the letters above. Do that before every calculation. Cleans up the registers.
I Y. So you take six divided by twelve equals. Mm -hmm. Don't press I Y yet. Just do the calculation. The calculation. Just do six divided by twelve. Equals. Equals. And now I Y. Good. Okay. For N, it'll be thirteen years times twelve. Hundred and fifty six. Press N. And then compute the CPT button at the upper left. Compute present value. That's okay. okay. Good deal. How are we doing? Everybody else okay? Four thirty two something. Okay. Well, let's let's take it to the next step. She needs that much money here. <clears throat> here she is today. So now we change the calculation around and we say, well, from today, that amount becomes the future value that she needs. 432, 561, and change. Her interest rate, we say, we're assuming, is going to be the same constant 6%, but she's doing this per month, so we want to take it on a monthly interest rate. And how many months does she have to contribute to this till she retires? 38 years. So she has 38 years, 12 times a year. That's in. 456. 456. And then what does she want to calculate? The payment. I mean, payments. The payment. How much does she need to make a payment as a payment into her investment each month? you get the notes straight. Of course, you screwed on inflation anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, a couple of things on that. Typically, when inflation starts going up, it takes a little delay, but then interest rates start going up. So she won't get hurt totally bad there. Mm -hmm. um, but if inflation is at 4% and she's only earning 6%, she's only net 2% ahead every month. So yeah, got to figure that in. That's what happened to a lot of people in the late 70s when they got ready to retire. They had been good conscientious savers through the 50s and 60s, and then in the 70s inflation went crazy and their investments and income didn't stay up with them. This time around, instead, you were conscientious, you invested like crazy, and then just the market went to hell. You know? Now you can't retire. It's a great country. Oh yeah. <laughs> Don't fall asleep. Everybody comfortable with the two forty seven ninety nine? Okay, did you clear your registers before you started? Okay. Alright, let's take a break here and see. Anybody else? Any kind of comments, questions about this? I just want to make you a little comfortable with that financial calculator. Because I have, if you've not, well, you haven't taken the finance class yet. We have a, a gentleman who's going to teach finance, Mr. Oliveira. And he and I and Dr. Searcy are all vehemently agreed 
work them to death with that financial crap calculator. Make sure they can do that thing in and out, day and night. Go to sleep with it, you know. So get comfortable with it. That's why I wanted to introduce it in this course. He is also, by the way, Mr. Oliveira, is, uh, holds a master's degree in, uh, I've forgotten the right term, it may be forensic accounting or fraud investigation or something like that. But uh, talking with him, he's interesting as a devil, and I think it'll be a good course in terms of practical purposes. So, that's assuming you get through Mr. Hooper's accounting. <laughs> Mr. Hooper's master's degree in accounting in one term, yeah. Good. All right. Those are the issues I had to cover. Anything else on your call? Um, I can or, issue. You see, yes, sir. Part of our calculations you had to deal with bonds and interest rates, rule 72 and all. I think I will just told you to do these on the exam. Okay. That's a good point. Yeah. You'll find the others down the road anyway. Well, the others have turned around. They'll be there in finance. Yeah. Yeah. And if, God forbid, Dr. Searcy doesn't teach all the managerial accounting in ICU, I'm sure you'll see it again. Um, the exam. I'm going to that test bank. I'm pulling out about 40 questions. I may ask you to explain three or four or five of them. I will probably weight those explanations more than I did last time. So I expect you to know all the answers, but I expect you to be able to explain all the answers. I'm supposed to know why. Yeah. And then you will have a couple of calculation problems, as we did tonight. That's it. That's the exam. All right? Anything else? I had a question on was problem three on the first couple of samples. Go ahead. It was about, um, I guess it was for retirement. Yeah. They're putting in 200 a month. Yeah. For like 30 years, and the other guy was putting in 200 a month for 20. Right. I noticed when you did your calculations, you put it as $2,400 for the year instead of 200 a month. So I, I think I did the calculation by a month basis, but as I was explaining it later, I said one guy put in 2400 a year. Okay. Same as the other guy, but he only put it in for 20 years instead of 30 years, and All that right. was the difference. Yeah. yeah. I was just trying to, to draw a, a comparison between how much each one contributed. Right. One guy got not quite twice his money back, and the guy who was there 10 years longer almost tripled his money. Right. And it, the point was start early. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Good question. Anything else? Anything comes up? Discussion forum? Email me? That's all I got. Bye. <laughs>